our top stories tonight. A cheaper alternative to alcohol is sweeping the region, plus students continue to struggle without their loans. Good evening, I'm Jamie Harris and you're watching 3CTV News. Thank you for joining us. It's halfway through the academic year and thousands of students up and down the country are still without their loans. With the cost of books and tuition fees continually rising, it's now harder than ever to live as a student. Amy Parker-Williams finds out what went wrong. Is university becoming more than a cost rather than an investment? On a three-year course, students could be up to £23,000 in debt due to accommodation, tuition fees and books. 85% of student financial aid comes from the student loan company to help cover tuition and accommodation fees. This year, over 100,000 students were without their student loan at the start of the term, leaving students very much penniless. The student loan company blames this on a 16.7% rise in loan applications this year. Although people began warning of the problem in emails in July, saying they couldn't log in, and if they could, they were then told of a six to eight week backlog. Having no loan means that I've got no income, so I go, if I go out and try and look for a job, I can't get one because there's no employment anywhere. The recession is making it hard for me to look for anything anywhere. I'm living off my student overdraft. Many students have leaned on universities for financial assistance. Any direct debits they've set up with the university to pay for things like rent that they let us know because that means we can defer the payment hold tight the backlog is shifting um, it's getting shorter although there are still almost one in four first year students who have yet to be assessed with student loans unable to provide where else can students turn but the bank but are they actually lending a hand or getting students to dig deeper into their pockets Pockets. With over a million students applying this year, the majority have been processed, but hundreds, thousands are still waiting for their money. It's a worrying time to be a student, knowing your answer to when this crisis could be resolved. Amy Parker Williams, 3CTV, Kensington. Well, I'm pleased to say I'm now joined by our correspondent, Amy Parker Williams. Amy, thank you for joining yeah, us. Thank you. So, how have the student loan company improved matters since the problems of last year's applications then? Well, I mean, it's important to realise the main reason why there was a backlog of student loans last year was the date in which students applied. Many were leaving it to the last minute. In fact, thousands were doing it after the deadline, and this affected all students across the UK, or well, the majority at least. This year, the student loan company have set the date on which students can apply to January, whereas last year it was February, March, and this should, have, uh, this should make it better this year. Yeah, so it's the same problem expected to happen again next year. Have we got confidence in them now? Chief Executive of the Student Loan Company, Ralph Seymour Jackson, assures that this won't happen again. I mean, he made an important statement, actually, saying that there's been thousands applying for uni this year, more so than five years ago, and as an institution, they wasn't ready. Whereas this year, they've got more staff and better compute service to provide for those new students. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds to me like, and the rest of us in the audience, um, are students fundamentally starving? That's what it sounds like. Here. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, they've come to uni to get a better education, yet they can't even afford food, and they can't even afford tuition and um, books for these mm -hmm. universities. It's becoming a struggle. Yeah, and how has this affected them elsewhere then? They can't, well, you know, there is a social life to uni as well, and they can't even go out. I mean, they have to go to university as well, but they can't even afford to do the basic things. And finally, in your opinion in this area, do you think students will be safe next year then? Um, only time will tell. Yeah. <laughs> well, we hope that the situation gets better th yeah. for them, of course. Yeah. Um, the situation is looking better. They've all got their loans now, most of them. Yeah, the they? majority have them now. In fact, all of them do. OK, thank you very much, Amy Parker Williams. Okay, okay. With the rest of the day's news, here's Jim Harding. Thanks, Jamie. Now for the 90 second news update. Students fearing another increase in university tuition fees gathered today to protest the issue in Parliament Square. The next general election is set to take place in the summer and the Liberal Democrats have already announced that they have delayed on making a decision on their tuition fee policies. With this year's prospective electoral candidates yet to clarify their stance on tuition fees, these students are keen to get their point across to political leaders. And there's good news for fans of the German market in the city centre, with another successful year of frankfurters and mulled wine beating the credit crunch. And the family-run business is set to return next year. 
More than £20,000 worth of brand new Apple Mac computers have been stolen from the Canterbury Christchurch University. The snatch took place sometime last week, although it's unclear exactly when they were taken. Police are examining CCTV footage from the campus and have yet to release an official statement. In sports news this week, Ashley Cole has suffered a fracture to his left ankle and there are fears that the 29-year-old Chelsea left-back, who played as first choice in the 2006 World Cup, may miss this summer's World Cup competition. It is thought that the injury will keep him out until May, just five weeks before the start of the tournament in South Africa. And finally, following the controversial comments from drugs advisor David Nutt that alcohol is safer than drugs, 3CTV sent reporter Caroline Elvin to investigate. We wanted to find out more about the recent increase in drug-related crime and explore the worrying rise in drug dealers in the area in the last year. Caroline Elvin reports. Drugs are becoming more attractive to students as the prices of alcohol rises. To get five ecstasy tablets, it costs just £10, whereas on average, students have six beers on a night out, costing them £18. A university student who has chosen to stay anonymous explains his views on the possible rising prices of drugs. If drugs prices went up, I don't think I would be able to afford it anymore. I wouldn't completely quit, but I would definitely cut down. Are there a lot more students on drugs than what the public thinks? Yeah, there are a lot more students on drugs than you would expect. The main reason is because it gets easier to get drugs as soon as you get to university. The red squares on this map show known drug dealers in Kent during 2008. The red circles show that in 2009 it has more than doubled in numbers. Canterbury City is known for the cathedral as well as the religious backgrounds, but below the surface, Canterbury has one of the largest student drug ratings in Kent. Quiet alleyways take the place of cobbled streets as students arrange to pick up drugs in dimly lit areas. After David Nutt, ex-ACMD chairman, was sacked for saying ecstasy and LSD were safer than alcohol, I talked to students on what they think of this claim. There seems to be a lot more accidents that I know of that happen when people have had too much to drink as compared to accidents of people that take too much uh, drugs. But with drugs, you don't know what's going to happen. Nobody knows the risk of taking drugs. Not at all. I'd rather get drunk than take any drugs. I've never taken drugs. I never will. With drug problems growing, we talked to Christine King, a drugs counsellor, on the matter. But the solution would be the drug users look for support. And I think that support groups and counsellors should advertise more so that students are aware that there is support around. With the amount of drug dealers increasing, as well as the prices of drugs falling, Canterbury Council are looking into improving the situation for the future. They hope to cut down on young adults on drugs by opening more youth centres and support groups. This is Caroline Elvin reporting for Free CTV. Well, we're now joined by reporter Caroline Elvin. Caroline, thank Hi. you for joining us. I think everyone is eager to know if things are actually going to get worse for Canterbury in the future then. Well it certainly would seem at the moment that nothing is going to change within Canterbury. Mm -hmm. I think the main problem that Canterbury is actually facing at the moment is that crime rates are rising at quite an alarming rate. With that obviously the problem is that drug and alcohol rates will rise as well. So are crime rates actually linked to drugs at all then? There's no actual links confirmed. At the moment what we're finding is the main users of drugs are actually students. That may seem surprising to you but it's actually not that surprising and the reason is that with drugs being illegal it's easier to get to students and they're obviously wanting to use them more because they're cheap, mm -hmm. they're accessible in Canterbury at the moment and it's obviously easier for them. Yeah I mean I and I'm sure many people at home right now were quite shocked to hear that drugs are actually <laughs> cheaper than alcohol. It's quite surprising and alarming. Um, what do you think about this? Well, the reason that, well, that we think that drugs are cheaper than alcohol is because obviously they're undercover. With undercover things, they can manage to keep them cheaper. With alcohol, you've got the laws. Obviously, pubs are going to want to make money, so they're boosting up the prices of alcohol as well. With drugs being such an undercover thing, there's less of a problem there. Mm. MPs are actually saying that they're, um, some are for making drugs legal. That's something that a lot of MPs are actually against, but some are saying that it could be a good idea in stopping people from using drugs. Yeah, and finally, is that something that many people have agreed on then? To be honest, not a lot of people have agreed on it in terms of MPs. A lot of them are saying that it wouldn't be a good idea and it would just make drugs rates rise quite a lot. Thank so. you very much, Caroline. That's all from us for now, but you can stay up to date around the hour on our website. That's at www.freectv.co.uk. I'm back tomorrow at the same time, but until then, good night.